professional genealogists know that obituaries and marriage announcements are not the only relevant news articles that can help document your ancestors and the world in which they live. Howdy, my name is Devin Noel Lee with Family History Fanatics. I studied journalism in college and worked in the industry during my early adulthood. Having studied historic and modern newspapers, I want to share with you 10 of the newspaper article types that benefit professional genealogists in their work. Make sure you're going beyond the obituary and diving deeper into these articles. Before I begin the list, there are two key points you need to know. First, when a professional genealogist searches a newspaper, they not only look for specific names, but they want to understand the context in which an ancestor lives. Therefore, use searchable databases like the ones on the screen and listed in the show notes. But after you find your ancestors in these publications, take time to explore additional details within the newspapers. Also, be sure to search for schools, communities, and organizations your ancestors belong to so that you can find out more about their lives, even if those articles do not mention them by name. Now that we've covered those two things, let's jump into the 10 articles professional genealogists use. A great feature about newspapers is that they will often document the transfer of land from one person to another. Land transactions appear in some of the earliest newspapers in existence. So when you find a land tr transaction, you will often find the date that the transaction took place, an explanation of the parcel of land, where it is located, how large the property is, and how many upgrades or amenities the property has. You may also find out the identity of the previous owner or owners and whether they are living or deceased. Pay attention to who is selling the property. In this case, the seller is a sheriff in what is called a sheriff's sale. When you see that classification, you should become excited and make note of this type of transaction. What's great about a sheriff's sale is you will likely find court documents such as probate records or debtor's filings to extend the story of your ancestor. Regardless of who is selling the property, if you find your ancestor listed in a newspaper in a land sale, you will want to research land records for the county the newspaper is printed in to learn more particulars about the property and its transfer. Have you discovered the joy of finding out how newspapers can point you towards additional records? One other tip that many professionals know is that some lands for sale are advertised not only in local newspapers, but also in issues around the country. For instance, these farms for sale are advertised in the St. Louis Post-Dispatch, a newspaper in Missouri, but the land is located in Arkansas. If you cannot find information about your ancestor's property in the local paper, expand your search. You never know where the article you need will appear. Genealogy research is about placing your ancestors in a time and location. One favorite newspaper article of professional genealogists is the list of unclaimed letters. In many newspapers, particularly historic ones, the post office would list who has not picked up their letters and provide a date associated with this fact. So while you can't learn much about Dorcas Kingsbury, you know that someone thought she was living in Salt Lake City on the 3rd of June, 1852. Many disasters strike in the towns where our ancestors lived or while they were traveling. Therefore, look for disasters that might have affected your ancestor's life or the town in which they lived. Then see if there's a list of those impacted by such a disaster. In this case, a fire was aboard a ship and a death roll was included for the passengers and crew members who died. If your ancestor was among this list, this would be a gold mine. 
Search newspapers for disasters in your ancestors' towns, such as building fires, tornadoes, floods, earthquakes, epidemics, and so forth. Then see if the paper printed a list of victims associated with the disaster. If you don't have a death date for an ancestor from a death record, a newspaper article that lists them as a victim can serve as their death record. No matter the denomination, religious events and news can help you add context to your ancestors' stories. Unless your ancestor was a minister or other leader, it's likely when you do this research, you might not find your ancestor by name. This is one case where you will likely seek out the church, the minister's names, or the denomination in general to learn more about your ancestor's religious community. One of the first articles you may find about your ancestor's religious community is when and where their congregation met. Many newspapers will list meeting times and places. For instance, notice the ethnicity-based congregations in Minneapolis, Minnesota. One is for the Swedish Seventh-day Adventist group, and another serves the Norwegian-Danish Seventh-day Adventist. Within a religious group, there might be smaller groups that had meetings. And in this case, it is the Victory Circle of the First Baptist Church in Eugene, Oregon. Notice that Mrs. C. O. Elliott will host the meeting in her home. By contrast, the Harmony Club of the same First Baptist Church is planning a potluck. Notice the names of the people in charge of this event. Now, your ancestor might not do the hosting, which is why these entries may not appear if you search for Mrs. A. N. Smith. But you can learn about the religious community in which Mrs. A. N. Smith involved herself based on your knowledge that she participated in the First Baptist Church in Eugene, Oregon. Now, if you do happen to have a religious leader in your family tree, then searching for their name, you may discover when they started living and serving in a particular area. You may also discover some of the topics your religious leaders discussed. Some newspapers will advertise the titles of lectures given by religious leaders. You can gain a lot of insight into what was on their heart and mind. But do not discount researching the topics taught at your ancestors' church, even if they were not the ones giving the sermon. If you find the name of religious official who is named on your ancestors' church-related records, then research that leader in newspapers. It really can add context and depth to your knowledge of your ancestor and the eventual stories you may write. Advertisements are a great place to learn about the businesses your ancestors may have owned or worked for, the item that they were either trying to purchase or sell, and the jobs that they are trying to hire for or they are trying to obtain. But remember, you're not just searching for your ancestors' name in advertisements and classifieds. You may be searching for their employers or the companies that they worked for. And sometimes you're just curious about what is being sold when your ancestor lived in this town to provide some historical context for a narrative you may write in the future. If your ancestor either owned or worked for the business Julianne and Son, finding this ad in the Baden England newspaper can tell you what this company sold. You can see that they claim they are the best and the cheapest in the district. Now in this classified ad, you can see that Mary Lawrence wants a middle-aged woman to be a dishwasher in her tavern. Notice the contact information for Mary. If you happen to discover that your ancestor worked for Mary Lawrence, then you can look at ads to see what qualification Mary desired when trying to hire your relative. Some professional genealogists specialize in writing narratives about your ancestors. One fantastic selection to add context to your ancestor's story is to search the entertainment section. Unless your ancestor was an entertainer, this section will surely be just for historical context.
For instance, if your ancestor lived in Natchez, Mississippi in 1832, you can see that a circus was coming to town. Notice the type of entertainment activities included in such a performance. Pay attention to the cost of attendance. If your ancestor had children, I'm sure that they heard about the circus and begged their parents to go. Sadly, many people love to gossip, and newspapers were notorious for spreading gossip. Check the newspaper for the gossip column. Notice how in the first article, an elderly, well-dressed gentleman entered the bank. If your ancestor worked in a bank, then they might have experienced the scene in 1857 in New York. Be careful because many gossip columns do not actually identify someone by name. The second article is about a young and pretty lady in New Orleans doing missionary work. The article talks about how she proceeded to do this work. Again, we don't know her name, but if your ancestor happened to be a missionary from New Orleans, this might be her, or your relatives might have known her. If you do happen to figure out a gossip column is about your ancestor, be careful. Because in gossip columns, some of this stuff is not factual. Perhaps that is why they never attach an actual name to the tidbit. Now, a close cousin to a gossip column is societal news. In this case, the events are small little news items about citizens coming to, leaving from, or hosting various events in town. Since names are attached, these items tend to be factual. Notice how in this item, Mrs. Edgar Ross is expected to travel home. She has been visiting her daughter, Mrs. Walter Blount. In the second article, Mr. James Stetson returned from a trip to Jamestown and New York, and he left for Auburn, Alabama, and it tells us where he is studying at Alabama Polytechnic Institute. If you didn't know where James moved in 1907, this article gives you some clues. Plus, if he happened to marry someone from New York, although he lived in Georgia, you might have a clue that he met this woman during that trip. To learn how to research society news using keywords related to such topics, check out my video, which is linked in the description box below. Professional genealogists know that court records are fantastic resources for the juicy details about our ancestors' lives. However, court records can often be inaccessible. One hack to finding out court cases that we need to research for our ancestor is to look at the legal notices and court rulings documented in newspapers. Remember that the court filings can appear in the local newspapers and other state publications. And if it is a particularly interesting or notable court case, it can be recorded throughout the country. In this entry published in 1890, notice the court filings of who is suing whom. We have the complaints by the plaintiffs against the defendants. You can learn a lot about the accuser and accused in these notices. Newspapers are also more accessible than many divorce court proceedings. As such, search newspapers for potential divorce filings and judgments. Perhaps your ancestors did not stay married long if they seem to not have had children or one spouse seems to have died, but you can't find a death date. Another court notice that often appears in newspapers pertains to guardianship issues. Be advised that individuals needing guardians are not always orphaned children. However, in this article, we see the names of Charles Phillips' guardians and his parents. In this case, it is likely that one or both of Charles's parents are deceased, and you can infer that their death dates happened before September 1904. One final list that helps us place our ancestors in a time and place, similar to unclaimed letters list, is jury duty list. Sometimes the lists are extremely brief and connect your ancestors to a specific court case. 
As such, you can learn what cases your relatives pass judgment on. That could make for some interesting stories. Other jury lists document who served when and how much they were compensated. I hope your greatest takeaway from these 10 articles is the wealth of information available beyond an obituary. Newspapers can also point you towards other genealogical records with the added bonus of helping you know exactly when, where, and who is involved in those records. <laughs> Good luck with your research. Please let me know what you find or what additional questions you may have about newspaper research. Leaving comments helps YouTube know other genealogists need to know this information. Plus, it helps me know what content to make next. If you like this video, be sure to hit the like button, share this video with other genealogists, and leave a comment. And if you really, really like this video, be sure to watch this next one about newspaper research.